Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Crank that up, Jay. Goddamn beautiful Wednesday we got going on. Let's everyone out there get our posture up. Take a good breath. Crack a refreshment if you got one. Let's get serious. We got a special guest today. Fan favorite Casey Kenny. What's going on, guys? Let's get the get in the MMA world fired fired up like the last one. Remember? <laughs> yeah, maybe not too fired up, but yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, you know, that one uh, that was one for the books. Okay, uh, this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, it's all about the confidence when it's time for sex. Am I right? And what's better confidence booster than fun around with your partner? All courtesy of the Chewables from BlueChew.com. What's BlueChew.com? BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra Salis, but in a chewable form. And at a fraction of the cost, Blue Chew's tablets help men combat all forms of ED and provide harder and longer lasting erections. Blue Blue Chew is an online prescription service. There are no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a street discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. BlueChew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient strength for your prescription. Don't like swollen pills? No problem here. BlueChew tablets are chewable. BlueChew tablets are made in the USA, and they prepare and ship direct, direct, so it's cheaper than the pharmacy. Okay. So, uh, BlueChew.com, code REDHAWK. R E D H A W K. Uh, when you guys are really wanting to lay the pipe, or you, you're maybe you're about to fuck a girl that you've dreamed about fucking, and you really want to lay it down good, and you want to make her come back for more. Nothing worse than having that opportunity, and you just bust in the first couple swipes. You been there? Been there. Casey's been there multiple times. So with the blue chew, I mean, I don't know if it's the best to use all the time, but once a month, when you're ready to really fuck for good like fuck good the blue chew gives you some a little bit of control it, it really does you're gonna have ultimate boner with ultimate control so check it out and give her a try ladies and gentlemen okay we got casey kinney in town he's been off for a little bit because you broke your hand against song little dong recently right yeah uh, i actually uh, detached my pinky tendon that's right august 7th so we're a little over a year out of that and you had you fought back to back dominic cruz song yadong and those both could have went either way right yeah you know tough ass fights close decisions some of the best in the world yeah good scraps so uh did you did you uh did you watch bo nickel last night i did watch bo nickel i was hoping to see a little more of him but hey can't knock the guy for going out there and finishing a dude like that bro i'm excited to see that kid fight people don't understand this motherfucker let me see here this motherfucker is is a serious wrestler and you know with the with those division one wrestlers that are in the in the ncaa finals multiple times he was a three-time national champion from penn state um those type of athletes are different dude right. they get their fucking paws on you you feel the power you can pull that a little closer in your face there we go cool. brother yeah and i believe he uh i believe he got second his freshman year too yeah so you know make it to the finals as a freshman a true freshman in yeah. the d1s i mean he won he went wrestled three different weight classes 74 84 and 97 so last year he won at 97 which he doesn't look like a super big guy but to win a d1 national championship at 197 like those guys are monsters so he's got to be just one of those guys that i mean it's not that he doesn't look fit or anything but he doesn't look incredibly big yeah. or strong but i guarantee he gets a hold of you and he's got that squeeze yeah you know that motherfucker feels strong dude there's just something about that even just training with bryce meredith bryce who's on the pod recently he was in, in the finals 
I think two times in the finals, four times state champ. They just got a different level of strength, dude. Yep. And someone like Bo Nickel, watching him, how good of a fucking athlete he is, and he he's obviously trained with very good guys at American Top Team. So I'm pumped. He called out Comzot. I'm like, fuck, that's a little steep right off the rip. But who wouldn't want to watch that? Right. And I mean, um, Comzot, you know, he he goes out there and grapples people. Obviously, he stood and bang with Burns, and he can put people down. But yeah. he's not super spectacular so most like on the striking i mean it's effective but he doesn't have crazy striking doesn't he's not going to really show Bo. i don't think something that he wouldn't see before you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure but then maybe the maybe their wrestling cancels each other out and then right. they're sitting there striking with each other Th that pace those guys come out with though with kamza and bo nickel eventually there's going to be someone who can kind of stop it maybe with their footwork maybe jack them up with the wrestling and then are you able to keep up that pace for whether it's 15 minutes, whether it's 25 minutes, like Chael Sonnen used to do, remember? Yeah. He used to come out, change levels and shoot on you, and change levels and shoot on you, change levels and shoot on you for 15 to 25 minutes right. before there was USADA. Right. Now there's USADA. <laughs> it's like, fuck, is that even humanly possible to be able to sprint in a fight for 25 minutes? I mean, especially at that weight. Yeah, and you look at the Burns Jemaya fight, like, they both slowed down because the pace was so crazy, but I'd say about mid-second round, they slowed way down compared to what they, they came out with. You know, yeah. they're still banging and going, and if you match that pace and stop it, you're probably a little winded, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, those guys come out like that, and, I mean, that's how... I had to slow my pace down just a little bit, but I remember my first few fights, it was like dead sprint, you know, still high pace, Bro. but there's just, you can't do it for... 15 25 minutes that's a big thing about going going from amateur to pro too you're used to these three minute rounds and about right at the three minute marks when you start getting tired yeah and then you move into five minute rounds and then five minute rounds and then title fights five five minute rounds so you really got to learn the pacing difference yeah it's, it's just uh, fucking huge it is huge um you know i went five rounds with roy vall who uh you know is a high paced guy and you know, we trained my ass off for that fight and uh, was in good shape, but still, you know, we slowed down just a little bit, too. You guys were scrambling a lot that fight, too? Yeah, uh, I think they were striking and grappling pretty much every round. Uh, you know, I dropped them in the first and then p pretty much had control, like back control and stuff mm -hmm. in the first. And then, you know, we stood up about every round. But I think third round, I really started to pick up the wrestling because we were pretty, you know, he was dangerous on the feet. And mm -hmm. then I was just mauling him on the ground. Uh He's got a good guard. I just kind of flipped him over out of his guard into that, you know, like turtle position, kind of just beat him up there. Yeah, you just seem like a stronger kid than him. Yeah. And for I want for Bo Nickel, I think the UFC is going to do it right with him. I th I don't think they're going to give him one of these top 15 guys right off the rip. But who knows? He goes and smokes two more guys in the UFC. They'll probably want to put him in front of a crowd, give him a little bit of tests, yeah. and then maybe two fights, maybe they'll put him in, in there. But he's yeah. only 2-0. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And... uh or three, I, is he 3 and 0 now maybe he, yeah he was 2 and 0 now he's 3 and 0 so i mean his first fight he showed some hands knocked yeah. that dude out uh the next two pretty much just took him down mauled him um but yeah i'd like to see him in the second or third round i mean mm -hmm. i know him coming from a d1 national champion he's definitely in shape can, can grab yeah. all that type of stuff but a fight's different man yeah i mean when you got to bring that when you got to bring that dog out in that second third round maybe you got a broke nose maybe you got a cut that's bleeding maybe you got cracked or maybe you broke your hand maybe you something happened that you did not expect right. and then how do you react but a kid like that i can't see him just being a puss you know yeah and i don't see you know man i wrestled in college for a couple of years and it's uh it's another beast you know yeah. I mean? those guys are these guys are savages. It's basically a fight. I remember coming out of wrestling tournaments, black eyes, you know, bloody noses, busted lips, like I was in a fight. Yeah, and training with Kale Sanderson for all those years at Penn State in that room for, with all those years. The kid knows how to learn. Right. So, I mean, I'm fucking pumped to watch. I'm, I'm glad they finally put him in. Yeah, shit. Uh, they were all ready for him. They had the game ready for him and everything last night. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, uh, how many times have you fought in Abu Dhabi? Uh, I fought twice, um, so both in the same month, October 2020. Oh, same month. Same That's month, right, yep. because you fought, you came back to Vegas, and then you got a short notice against... Uh, Nathaniel Wood for the Habib Gaethje card. 
Damn. So, so you came back to Vegas for a week and then went back to. Yeah, which I knew I was fighting before I left. You want a little go of this? Yeah, sure. You won't give me a little. You won't give me a sore on my lip, will you? Nah, we're good there. From those hookers? Nah, man. Freaking. Uh, I guess I gotta take those blue chews so I can get some <laughs> get some of those girls. Yeah. Oh, I bet that was an experience. So, what's the big differences in Abu Dhabi? We've never been there, and we leave next Thursday. We're gonna go about two weeks early. Yeah, um, actually, it's ironic. It's the same same month. You know, I fought uh, October third and October twenty fourth. So, man, it's it's a little humid. Like it's a little humid. Um, I also remember. Um, I mean, the Nathaniel Wood fight was one of my, you know, best banger fights out there. It's got fight of the night, and um, I remember doing the interview on ESPN and it's only happened like one other time in my career and uh man I didn't feel good I was about to pass out and my blood sugar was a little low you know we always tried to do everything perfect mm-hmm. you know as far as like getting electrolytes making sure you're not drinking too much water flushing the electrolytes out type of thing but uh I would say overload on the electrolytes type of thing over there because the humidity that type of stuff uh like, I remember I was soaked warming up. Like, we barely did a warm-up because they had us in, which I'm not sure where you guys are at this time, but basically it was just like a tent they made over there in Abu Dhabi. Ah. And it was it was really warm in the warm-up area. And then... Um, Let me see. That, that, that makes you... I, I wonder if it's in the same exact arena or not. Yeah, I think they'll probably have a few fans, so it might be in a different arena. Because they didn't have any fans in the one you entered. Right. Zero. And I'd say that, and then um, the first time I went was really weird because uh, it was still on American time, like the the, paper, oh, that's the, right. the show. So I ch- clocked in or I checked in at one thirty a.m. their time. The Ethad Arena. Ethad Arena. Um, e i t h. Is that what it was or not? No, I don't believe so. I think that's the one that they were going to do it in, the, the Habib card. Uh-huh. They were going to do it with some fans, but they ended up not doing it. Mm-hmm. But that's basically right. It was right next to it. Right close, huh? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, the hotels, other than that, it, it, it didn't affect you that much because your performances were always fucking good as fuck out there. Was it that different um, than being in America? Not really, man. Um, you know, like I said, being a little humid, but that could be... You know anywhere anywhere um no nah, it really wasn't that much different you know they had the food and everything for us so it was great uh you know the oc always takes care of you with that stuff and they uh, had the uh the meal prep foods what, yeah. what what's it called again um well it used to be trifecta but now it's a different one. Oh, really yeah uh, like okay trifecta. so they had trifecta they're ready to rumble for everyone yeah oh, and, good. Uh, and then also they had which we were locked in um you know this bubble type thing and they had restaurants downstairs fire Um, yeah it was good man everything was good like you know i found stuff at the restaurant i could eat that week uh definitely after uh weigh-ins you know they had basically whatever you wanted pasta steaks dinners that type of shit so so that was heavy covid time you were taking a covid test every day yeah man um we would have to do two days in las vegas um and then we'd fly there in a hotel room we wouldn't. We were. We were only allowed to leave our hotel room before we, uh, before we took our COVID test. So we got there and like they didn't have training area. We just trained out in the parking lot and then we ran a hotel room for two days. In the Vegas suites there. Uh yeah, in the, in the yep. Holiday Inn suites. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> and then, uh, then we went to did the sixteen hour flight, and then we had to stay in our hotel room for two more days in Abu Dhabi. So it was like that was one thing I wasn't quite ready for. We were in a hotel room. Or not, not even having a training room for five days of the trip, pretty much. Damn. So you were four days in the hotel. Were you Jane it a lot or not? Dude, no, not not fight week. Not yeah, fight yeah, week, yeah. Not you're fight empty. Week. You're empty. Yeah. So, uh, but man, I was I was getting restless there towards oh, the end. Fuck. Abu, especially when we get to Abu Dhabi, it's like, damn, I'm in Abu Dhabi. Now mm-hmm. I have to sit in a hotel room for 48 hours. But, yeah, because you guys, it, it was heavy COVID time, yeah. so you guys weren't able to really explore and cruise around much. No, dude, they had they had like military around this bubble like it was not no joke um then you could rent the jet skis and they even had like a coast guard sitting where you couldn't go past a certain area on the jet ski damn Um, so they were they were serious about it which i believe they got some sort of pass because at that time they had the 14 day quarantine Mm -hmm. when you came into a country and abu dhabi was one of those spots so obviously we didn't have to do that 
so I think that's why it was so strict. They probably got some certain pass for all of us to come. Yeah, so we we still just got to do a COVID test every forty eight hours. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think it was about like that forty eight hours. It? Yeah. So what you been doing on your off time much? How you been keeping busy, man? Because you've been you've been off for a year now. So yeah. what have you been doing? Just you know, I've, I've been training when I can, but just enjoying life, man. Just Fuck yeah. uh, you know, eating some bad food and out, hanging out with friends, going out, smoking, doing all that stuff. Fuck so, yeah, enjoying it a little bit. Know, uh, but it was good. It was, it was some downtime, you know. I've been uh, on your downtime though. Do you watch like Netflix shows? Do you take a little smoke, smoke game? You know, or uh, what do you do? I don't game. So that is one thing. Like before this break i hadn't really watched much much of anything like not much netflix maybe turn it on to fall asleep type thing but mm -hmm. you know got into the cobra kai series uh watched a bunch of movies um it's another shit have you watched that jeffrey dahmer uh, i started it what a fucking what a crazy guy good dude right? no show it's just like <laughs> jesus fuck bro what a crazy guy but yeah uh, i'm trying to think of some of the other ones uh ever watch a uh, top boy on netflix uh -uh. it's a um, it's just like London gangs basically battle for control of London. Pretty know, fire. Thing. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. Because you got your own place out here in Glendale. Or have you been staying in Tucson or here more? Uh, a little bit back and forth, uh, but I, I live up here. And then my parents live down in Tucson, so I'll go down and stay with them, train with Chris. Nice. That type of thing. You got a girlfriend now? Nah, no girlfriend. Damn, man, so dude. you're still swiping. Still swiping, dude. You know, you got to swipe right. What's your usually go-to <laughs> swipes when you say you match with a cutie? And she hasn't said, do you just say, hey, what's up? What's your go-to? Or something that works. Man, I'm pretty basic. I just stick with I stick with the, hey, what's up type thing. I know some guys go all in, but yeah. I'm not that committed to the swiping right. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So do you do you try to get it out of the way that you're kind of wanting to smash off the rip? Or do you kind of play it like, maybe let's go on a date here uh, and get to know each other? Nah, I'm not a big dating guy like I normally uh -huh. You know, I think the, the dates and stuff, you know, that's kind of the girlfriend thing. But uh, so how do you get it out of the way? Like what words do you use to get out of the way to, to where just, that girl knows you want to fuck? Well, I mean, I'll just be straight up. Maybe not say it so directly, but cause some of them are about it. Some of them aren't, but maybe not say it so directly, but more like um, they like give them a compliment. Like, or? hey, I'm not looking for anything serious. You know, want to chill type thing. Oh, like, that's that's see, that's a good one. You know, straight up about it, but not too not heavy. Too heavy, you know, but still like getting to the point. Like, uh -huh. look, I'm we're not not looking for anything serious. Yeah, because so. you can always use the excuse like I got to focus on my career right now. I'm just not ready to dial in for a girl. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, there's that, and then you know another good one is I'm just looking for some good company. You know? <laughs> So that's a good one. That's a good one, too. Might have to patent that one. I like that one. <laughs> I might. Can I borrow it? You can borrow that. Okay, okay. Yep. And do you, ever, you you usually, are you 50-50 on there? Because I just feel on Tinder, it's just like nothing. But I do have a picture of Mariah and I on there. Yeah. So that kind of puts away the hope of a girl wanting a boyfriend or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, you have some success, but I guess I'd have some more success in person type thing. You know what yeah, because at, at the clubs... I mean, at the clubs, the girls are looking to kind of get naughty, huh? Yeah, and, you know, it kind of depends. The hit or miss. Some of them in the new age, it's like the younger ones, it's like they are they need to know you before you – like if you come up and talk to them, they're a little bit like thrown off, like who are you? But, you know, if that's, that's girls that probably don't want to mess with anyways, you know. Which it's weird because like, okay – the girls are getting sexy. They're putting on the sexiest dresses. They're putting on makeup. They want to look sexy. And then if you come up and just say, hey, what's up? And they look at you like, why are you talking to me? It's like, yeah. Why are you fixed up at this fucking club? Like, right. That's that's how I feel. That's I normally turn around. Okay. Yeah. All Peace. right. Peace. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's there's too many out there, but it's, you know. The, but then once they find out who you are, they find out you got a little check mark, and then they're like, oh, <laughs> it is easier sliding in there with check mark. <laughs> For real. So you guys been going to Scottsdale much? Uh, man, not really. You know, uh, uh, I guess occasionally, but man, old town's kind of. I don't know the super club scene. You know, it's. I guess I'm kind of over. I'm 31 now, so it's getting a little yeah. older. You know, more of a dive bar type of guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, stick to invite some people over to the house type of thing. Yeah, you know, I like that better too. The clubs are just fucking always just so awkward for me. It's yeah. it's it's a rarity that I'm in a in a club like that and I'm just really letting loose, chilling. It's always like yeah. Ah. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't mind getting down, dancing that type of thing, yeah. but. You know, you go do that in Old Town. You're jam packed in like sardines. You're pouring sweat before you know yeah. before you know it. So and you're trying to talk to a chick, and you're just fucking screaming. It's just yeah, you can't, even, you can't even hear. You know, yeah, uh, fuck I went, that. I went to Vegas for 
a bachelor party a couple weekends ago and you know i was in a club and it's like dude the music was so loud like i would i couldn't i was trying to talk to this girl and she couldn't hear me so i i got close and started yelling and then it was too loud for her that i was yelling in her ear and it was just like man forget fuck this. this fuck this <laughs> i hate that shit dude uh so you, you do you smoke weed are you uh do you wake up and take a bong rip right off the rip usually uh maybe yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> occasionally occasionally or not you know get so going wake up take a fucking rip ski and then yeah. you usually make yourself breakfast you go out yeah I'm, i'll uh i normally eat a little bit of breakfast you know if i'm gonna train i don't like to eat too heavy but i like to have something in my stomach and like then, do oatmeal or what yeah uh, oatmeal and fruit or like a little bit of carbs and mainly some mainly some fruit in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then uh, sometimes I'll do coffee. Sometimes I'll do like green tea, black tea uh, with a little honey type thing. A little charge uh, up. Yeah, get going and, uh, you know, smoke some tea in the morning and freaking ready to rock. Let it rip, dude. Yeah. Sometimes weird. When you take a, right, a rip of the right sativa, it's like you don't even think about getting tired like usually you're like going there okay i'm getting tired and it's just like going through your head but then sometimes you take a good rip and you're focused on what you're doing and it's fucking prime yeah and for me uh it's more like getting in the zone type of thing you know mm -hmm. uh, i think by the time i warm up and you know do all that stuff i'm not really not really even stoned anymore it's just kind of like the you know got in the zone hit the music got the caffeine going got you, you focused know, up got me focused you know uh you know focused on getting ready to go and kind of charged up and then by the time we're training it's kind of back yeah. to normal anyways so those are your, you think those, those are your main drugs there is just weed and caffeine yeah pretty much man pretty much yeah. um i mean anything else it's like fuck it's just gonna end up fucking you up in the long run yeah you know dabble in some uh some shrooms and stuff maybe not really not that much at all just a couple times in life and yeah. it's good to go and get a little reset you know especially nope. some of the stuff that's coming out with you know what th it. those things can do a good little dose of mushrooms it just really makes you kind of dial in what's important yeah it's fucking nice dude yeah. yeah one of the listeners well i probably shouldn't talk about that actually so yeah that's good so just uh, some weed yeah. but you try are you drinking every weekend no nah, no not every weekend once a month yeah every, every occasionally obviously a little more here and there but uh you do much video games or i don't man i haven't gamed in forever uh, oh really yeah it's been a long time since i gamed uh Man, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not against them. I guess I just ne kind of fell off the gaming world there, yeah. and, and uh, just never went back. You know, I was, I was teaching and training, and doing all kinds of stuff in the twenties before, mm -hmm. you know, before the UFC, and had a super busy schedule. And I guess I just fell off the gaming world. Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially coming up, it's like, dude, you're so wiped from two practices a day. Yep. It's like fuck. But yeah, I've been. Uh, we were thinking about o or uh, opening a little coffee shop. Because I started, um, I've been doing an AeroPress to make my espresso every morning. It's a really nice coffee, but I've been looking into espresso machines, and I ordered one, a pretty nice one. It wasn't like that nice, but it was 500 bucks. And I'm looking it up. I'm like, to make good espresso, it's not fucking easy, dude. Right. Like quality espresso to where, because a lot of coffee you drink, it's already pre-ground up. So it's probably a lot of lost a lot of its aromas, a lot, a lot of its real power. And if you don't get the right grind in your coffee, that, yeah, and I was talking about if you don't grind your beans to the right size, like you have one grind that's really big, that's going to maybe get off give off some like sour aromas and then a, a really finely ground one that's going to give off a different one then you got a a cup of just bitter coffee i'm like there's so much that goes into a good fucking quality cup of coffee it's it's pretty sweet but then it makes me think i'm like damn there's a lot more to go to going into opening a coffee shop than i think yeah um i'm not a big coffee connoisseur you know i like coffee but uh you, you know, like I'm it just, just black no, nah, I'll drink a little, little cream in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little cream in the coffee. No sugar. Um, but, man, I mean, a lot of those espresso's machines are freaking, they're expensive. Dude, right? that, and that, like 500 bucks, that's like a, ch a cheaper one. Right. A lot of the ones from at the uh, stores, they can go up to three racks, right. 10 racks. So, like, I mean, I guess there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, fuck, it's a heavy drug. It's a heavy drug, but you get a good, good coffee. Get yeah. you fucking charged. You know what? They got good coffee in Abu Dhabi. Really? Yeah. They Quality, some, huh? Yeah, it was really good. So, um, it was you, strong. You watch any of the Andrew Tate stuff? Man, uh, just like little clips scrolling through Instagram. I've never actually like tuned into his stuff. <laughs> what, do think, what do you think of it? <laughs> oh, man. I, I was wondering how long it was going to take before he got canceled. You know, like. Bro, I still don't think he should. Hey, hey Jay, do you think you can turn up my mic a little bit? I don't know. I don't know if it's this mic or this cord. I don't know. 
I didn't think he should get canceled. Right. Bro. Right. I mean, I don't think you know he's not saying anything that's that outland. I mean, maybe it is that outlandish, but bro, they have they have people on YouTube, right? Like channels that are popping off of people clearly uh, bullying or or vandalizing or just doing fucked up shit, and right. they don't ban those guys, right? And I mean, I don't know. It, there's a lot of a lot of stars out there that you know. We're doing, I think, worse shit than probably he is, or saying worse stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, they're they're trying to kill that masculinity, man. Yeah, I watched this. Uh, there's this YouTube YouTube uh, thing of a guy asking people on a college campus why they do you know who Andrew Tate is? And they're like, yeah. And do you not like him? No, we fucking hate him. He's a dickhead. And he's like, why? Because he's a misogynist. And he always he asks them all define misogyny, and they go, they just have no idea what even misogyny even means. Right. And none of them have a clue on why they hate Andrew Tate. They just do. Right. And I mean, freedom of speech, man. I thought that was all speech. You know what I mean? And it seems like uh, certain things need to get censored these days. It's fucked, though. It's fucked if on YouTube and stuff we're going to be just, they're going to start censoring all that shit. Yeah. And I mean, I guess if you, you know, you got that platform, but. Uh, I, you know, I think yeah. people should be able to say what they want. It almost seemed like he was he was spreading more of a. Uh, yeah. Bobby Green was one calling calling Sean out, calling a bunch of people out for failed drug tests, like calling him out like a douche almost, and then he he just failed. Yeah, I just read. Which man? I've always been a Bobby Green fan. Um, yeah, me too. And uh, like you said, he's he's always been against that stuff, and I think uh, he said he just took. He took the wrong supplement from Walmart or some shit like that, which I get how you could do that, but we all know how touchy that is. Yeah. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there we go. We're still recording, Jay. Yep. Does it sound uh, decent? Yeah, we were talking about Bobby Green testing positive for for the shit. It's like, yeah, he probably wasn't purposely taking anything, but the shit he tested positive for was like. Mm, I could see why. I mean, you were, obviously he's not trying to cheat, or I don't fucking know. But the side effects. There's a bunch of good, like good info on that DHA. It's, it's like a anti aging supplement, um, yeah. reduces body fat, does all this. Um, I was the, reading that is basically what he popped for was like testosterone. Yeah. Right, which is what was in that, I believe. Yeah, some some cheap ass shit from Walmart. I'm just like, God, it sucks because you really got to be careful. You really got to be careful with USADA. You yeah. cannot just take over the counter shit. You, you can't go to GNC and buy something and, no. and take it. You're running a big risk of fucking failing your test. Yeah, the only thing um, I take outside of Thorn stuff is um, the Extreme Endur- Extreme Endurance by X Endurance. It's nice, man. What's in that? Hard to say. It's basically a lactic acid type uh, thing. It's a, like um, you know. I call it like my legal EPO. You know, oh, like fire! It's uh, you know one. It's USADA approved, um, and it's I don't know exactly what's in it. There's a lot of shit in it, but basically it's to you know help your recovery and and help the lactic acid from building up in your body. And um, and it helps. Yeah, man, I I, I like it. Uh, I know a lot of people. I know like Bulldog was taking it. Uh, I think Magic Mike takes yep. it. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I've heard of I've heard about it a couple times. And. Uh, you know, they X Endurance has, a, I think, a, you know, your normal line of supplements and stuff, but that's the one that I grab. And that then, one sticks out, huh? Yeah, and uh, you know who got me on that was uh, Chris. Curioso. Chris, yeah, Curioso, mm-hmm. and he was uh, back in the days like, take this shit, man. You got, you got to try it out. Get you fired up, damn. We got to give her a run. Yeah, you know, it's, it doesn't really get you fired up, but it's like maybe it's in your head. I'm like, man, I'm in yeah. shape already. You yeah, know, let's go. It keeps the blood flowing. We pull out a little closer to your face. Yeah. Do you hear the shit that came out about? Uh, brett Favre, ah uh, man i i heard something about it but i don't really know many details of it it said uh although no legal charges have been brought up yet text messages obtained by mississippi today a watchdog journalism startup show the, the 52 year old garnering more than 7.1 million from the coffers of temporary assistance for needing families he successfully lobbied for five million dollars to build a new volleyball arena at the university of southern mississippi where his daughter was enrolled and played the sport and he and got 2.1 million provocas for it. A biotech company he was involved in, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, that's crazy. So he 
got all that money and then didn't use it for the right stuff. And then I don't know if this is old either, but it's in the same article. A lawsuit against him by two massage therapists, alleged massage therapists alleging sexual harassment was settled out of court. It's like, dude, when I hear <laughs> shit like that, I'm like, God damn, that's the type of shit that happened to fucking me. Yeah, I mean, well, like, I don't Not know. Not sexual it's harassment, but a girl could know that's Brett Favre, and he could just, like, say something flirty, and she could just be offended and take it right. to a whole new fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, any of that stuff that's actually you know not what the woman wants that's that's no no you know oh like, for sure but i don't know some like you said you know the name yeah he, he said she looked cute or something and yeah that's about all that happened or or you, you really don't know he could right. be like i'm brett Favre. get the fuck over here and grabbing her ass something fucked up right you know? that's that's what i always think when i see stuff like that because i mean i feel like for i mean i guess girls are crazy with that sometimes but like you gotta you gotta do something like especially if you're getting a massage you know yeah <coughs> it's like and um, the massage finishes she takes the tip and then she tell texts her lawyer like or something right or you know like i don't know if you're getting an, just an actual massage from a massage therapist like i'm not gonna freaking ask her for a happy yeah, ending at the and end a, and a massage envy <laughs> yeah you know yeah. <laughs> it's like uh man i don't know about this you know yeah so oh, maybe maybe worst. he's in there doing that or he's like calling like you think brett Favre's not going to massage envy he's probably calling like a licensed yeah professional pre- professional massage therapist over to his house or something you know <laughs> massage envy yeah <laughs> but i don't know still not asking her for a happy ending or whatever the hell he's doing uh yeah this jeffrey dahmer shit dude it's fucked up a milwaukee yeah. cannibal or milwaukee monster was an american ser- serial killer and sex offender who committed the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys did you you've watched some of it yeah i finished it I holy watched all fuck of it. dude it's so creepy those black guys i'm like i was talking to mariah i'm like you could get out of this situation so fucking easy you don't understand and you like point out the mistakes the black guys made to get away right and, and i told mariah too i'm like picture i don't want to say the student but i said picture this person when you first rolled with him he first came in he's the same size as that jeffrey Dahmer guy right. and how he felt to you in jujitsu right because she's a blue belt and she's like yeah she doesn't look at it that way i'm like that's how weak that motherfucker would feel you'd be able to hop on his neck like pretty easily right well he was getting him with the drinks i know those slurp right. drinks like so i guess maybe a couple of them you know he had to that's force true to i do forgot it, but he was mainly getting with the drinks and they would pass out and they're loopy they're loopy so i think uh that last or the guy that got, actually got away and how he got caught you know he didn't drink anything and that's why they had that tussle but mm-hmm. yeah that's true or that's right. i think the one the deaf guy uh you know he snuck up behind whacked him with a hammer or from what it what it shows in the you know in the thing. I haven't got to that part yet. Oh no, it's damn, okay. No, 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 it's okay. But uh, yeah, the, the drinks. But and maybe that was you know that was 1991. Man, I was born that year. That was probably before you ever thought about someone putting stuff in your drink. Like today's yeah. world, you know, yeah. you don't take a, st- a drink from a stranger you just met, especially if he's I mixing mean, it up over there on the side. Any yeah, any of those times, but kind of before the internet, you were just. I mean, I think everyone was just probably gullible as fuck right and i mean i guess i don't know i guess the midwest culture too you're not really planning on somebody yeah doing like that me- in a doing small that, town messing with you especially you know these guys you know being gay guys they're at this you know gay club they probably don't have too many places that they can go mm-hmm. and you know i'll be uh i'll be together and type of thing so this cute little blonde guy comes in for him and yeah and he's over. got this little weird attitude or whatever but god what would you do if you're you're you had a kid and he's three or four years old and he's just up you can tell he's just obsessed with killing animals you're like he loves it and he like loves gutting it like oh man i mean i guess if he you know he's that weird of a kid like they were they were happy he was into something <laughs> <laughs> and then okay but that's a clear sign of a serial killer right yeah. So I would probably take him to a mind mechanic at an early age and, right. and expend a lot of money every week. You sit with this mind mechanic, this this uh, therapist, and let him try to fix you and get this out of you because this could be bad. Right. And I mean, 
if you watch, you know, just from what I, I don't know his mom personally, but from what I've seen in the video, she seems that's bad right. shit crazy. You know what I mean? Like that's right, dude. Those antidepressants and all those fucking pills that they're just shoving down their throat at that age. No wonder right. he's fucked a hundred, hundred percent. It's from that. Right. Like I was listening to the the recent podcast with Joe Rogan and uh, this guy here, and they're talking about what the fuck is it called? Sorry, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Towards the end, though, his dad was saying he had those thoughts when he was in age two. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah Brigham Bueller. They talk about the the pharmacies and the big pharmas and how fucked it actually is. And health insurance and how bad they're fucking people. And all these pills like oxycodone. And it goes goes into all a bunch of background on that. And it's like, damn. So these people you're supposed to look at and really trust, you can't trust them. No. I mean, man... You know the boom of the the pain pills and stuff. You know, like I think it was like two thousand nine. Oxycontin became abuse proof. The actual real oxycontin, which out came different stuff. So they, it, they said they said it was not uh, addicting. No, 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 no. Um, so they made the the true oxycontin pills uh, like a gel, so you couldn't crush them up and uh, snort them or like what some of the addicts were doing. They melt them down and shoot them up. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't do that with those. But out came all these other pills. Uh, one that flooded where I was at was called Opana, which was like oxymorphone, which was oxycotton and morphine. It was mm-hmm. stronger. And then where you see all these zombies around the freaking town right now, there's they got the fake perks, right? And that's oh, what are those called? Um, well, out came these things called I think it was like a roxycodone. It was basically they they tweaked it a little bit in the pharmacy world and they were like these little blue pills now uh you know you probably heard rappers talk about fake perks and that type of stuff Mm -hmm. um now these little blue pills that look exactly like those are just fentanyl coming from mexico and they're super dirt cheap and that's what all all, everybody's smoking out here fentanyls yeah it's it's a fake it's a fake perk you know or it's like basically uh, you know, the, when, when Oxycontin became abuse proof, they they made these like thirty milligram uh, Percocets. Basically, mm-hmm. you know, they were tiny, um, and those mimic those the real ones. And then, but it's just fentanyl crushed oh. in a pill. In the wrong dose of fentanyl, you're dead, right? Yeah, I think that's like how Mac Miller died and everything. Um, and then there's been there's been some other people that have think you know passed away from that but that's what you know when rappers are rapping about talking about a fake perk because it looks exactly like what comes from the pharmacy but it's just fentanyl crushing the pill and that's oh. what all these zombies are out here bro call them zombies but you know what i mean like uh th- you know you see it everywhere oh it's fucking sad everywhere dude. it's, it's, it's sad it's sad but it makes me wonder you know like they, they did this one good thing and then they just let all this other stuff pop out what right. was the good thing or like the oxycontin abuse proof thing and then for some reason they tweaked it and all you know you had the yeah. same shit but it was just you know yeah it just came out in a different pill form yeah so Fuck, it's like bro. how how does how does someone that's supposed to, you know they're doing something to try to protect people but then it just turns around and does the opposite pretty much yeah it's like you got to be fucking careful but but dude, back to the Jeffrey Dahmer thing, his mom taking all those pills and all those antidepressants and all all those pills and then he just gets fucked up. Yep. Like ooh. But I was watching uh what were you saying? Oh, I was just gonna say and he was just a loner, man. You know, he's a, I mean yeah. I, I mean that's probably part of it, but I don't know, those guys that are just super I mean, a kid that's a super loner. It's gotta be Yeah, or just in just some gene that he was born with that form maybe formed for his mother that took out like the empathy in his brain and just made him a sociopath made right. him not have feelings toward that kind of thing right because you know he talks about he didn't want to do these things but it just it happened like he knew what he was doing but he, he didn't he didn't want to do it yeah like the the first uh couple people he killed like he was he, he went crazy that it actually happened oh god and then um i was watching um I just turned on a couple minutes of it and I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. The Kardashians. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> bro, one of the girls has got uh, an embryo transfer. And I was like, what the fuck's an embryo transfer? Yeah, Do you know what that is? I have no idea. It's when a girl, so if I got Mariah pregnant, so they could stick a tube up there, get that, get that sperm in the egg or whatever, put it into another girl, and that girl have that, that exact baby. Really? So. 
how crazy is that so the so the girl so like say mariah wouldn't have to go through the whole body change and right. get pregnant and do all that so the kardashians did that yeah and oh. then she found out all she, of them or just one of the ones i forgot what her name was the one that has the black basketball player he cheated on her and they have that that baby coming in like a couple weeks oh uh, was it lamar odom and was it Chloe? i think it was a tristan guy tristan, okay. i don't know they've been around a yeah, lot of them. for a minute <laughs> but dude that is insane i wonder how much that runs uh, just a normal embryo transfer that would be oh. scary and like how much bread does that mom that has to make that baby and just give it away make 15 grand 20 grand dude 100 uh, grand uh, more than that probably more than that like uh, i've heard of a uh, someone getting carrying a baby for like a, can you find a, that embryo transfer costs someone carrying a baby for a gay couple uh -huh. and they basically housed her for that long and i think it was like 30 40 racks that she got 30 40 stackers something like that probably for the Kard kardashians it's even more guys yeah, i apologize it depends on the girl like whoever they're carrying the baby they get to make up the price yeah oh uh, yeah yeah maybe um like i said sorry about that audio out there i don't know if this audio is completely fucked because in my earphones it sounds kind of like shit but it could just be my earphones yeah, but uh you sound good to, to it me sounds fine though. yeah it says, yeah 25 to 30 starting 25 to 30 starting damn yeah so i mean that's you're not a car carrying a kardashian that's probably probably a mill and if you're a loaded dude and you're like i don't really want my wife to lose her body but it's like there's probably something special about going through it with the kid and then it coming out and knowing you built it. There's probably a certain connection that comes with that. It has to be. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any kids, but any mother that's talked about having a baby is like, did you know, you see girls post about having a baby on Facebook and it's like the most love they've ever felt immediately. Mm -hmm. So. And I can't even fucking imagine. Because you got any animals? Yeah, I got a dog. Love them? You love them, man. It's like, God damn. If that's even a, like, percentage of what a human is that's crazy because i fucking love my dogs right, right and uh you know that's what you always hear about kids so man that's and i don't know i i guess you got to trust the science behind it but that's a uh, like you're you know the other woman's still having the baby yeah exactly like does it come out with everything the same right because her, her her health is the one building that thing right so i wonder who knows yeah who fucking knows uh tyson fury it looks like that fights off because you see that video of him saying the mud line monday is the deadline if he doesn't sign the contract by monday the fight is out the window and his josh is <laughs> geeked out bro at the fight he's like <laughs> oh tyson <laughs> he just fury. took some of the good good straight to the dome piece up to his old tricks mm -hmm. do you see the 17 year old that got signed i did what'd you think of him Ah uh, man, you know he was tough. He was mm. good, pretty well rounded. I'd like to see more of his striking. You know, he was a really good grappler, but uh, you know he's he's definitely staying there and bang. But it's so hard to say. Yeah. It, it's so hard. It's hard to say. I mean, from the outside, his skills look good. But if you put someone that's done jujitsu and grappling, and they have fought a lot against someone who's not very good, they're gonna look good. So it's hard to say. Put him against an elite guy. Um, but I think he's. He, I think he trains at a good gym, yeah. and they're gonna like I said, UFC's smart, bro. They've been doing this so long. The matchmakers are smart. They yep. can watch. They've been watching fighting for the whole time, right. so they're gonna give him the right matches. Yeah, and I mean, he's only gonna get better. You know, like, yeah. That's wait till he hits mid twenties. Yeah, you know, he's got freaking he's got a whole fight career almost before he's in the mid twenties. It's fucking insane. And then we got uh, Brian Barberina, Rafael dos Santos announced. That's so sweet, dude. How sweet for Bam Bam, dude. Yeah, man, he's... I, I love watching Bam Bam fight. Like, Bro, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch. He really is. I think that's, you know, RDA... Man, that's a, I think that's a bad matchup for RDA. You know, like, I know he's going to try to, out, you know, out-technique out him, out-will out, uh, him, but Bam Bam will hit you, dude. He'll hit you and he'll take all your shots. So And that's, that's the a thing. tough fight. And he's, he's very good at... I mean, Brian's takedowns defense is very good and if he does get taken down he, he's very good at getting up right and he's got that like it's not like his cardio is crazy he's just got that heart and that durability right. he just sticks him in there and southpaw and southpaw that's what i was thinking as soon as that got announced i'm like damn brian could beat him too 100 percent. now yeah. he's beating robbie lawler with that fight how sick was that that was sick fight. <laughs> oh my god right, bro. like we're every in the fight back. he's like, in man every fight like luke a, uh I mean, go on and on, but I remember Luke K and Robbie Lawler. You know, look how you know Luke K was top of the division too, and 
Bam was going to win that fight if, if it went to the distance. Yeah, it's fucking sweet. And it's good for him, too. And I think he got a new contract. And he's got, like, awesome family. Miss yeah. that dude. So I guess uh, Purse Ariel Hawani told him for the reason for the fan media absence, because they're not allowed in any media at the UFC this weekend. That's what I heard. Uh, and it has something to do with Mark Zuckerberg. Really? I wonder what the fuck they got going on there. So no media whatsoever. They're not even allowed to do any Zoom stuff or what? I wonder. I wonder if he's trying to, he has a crew in there trying to get set up for the metaverse or what's he got going on? Who knows? What if MMA media just changes? Bam, it's like a set. Mark Zuckerberg. Imagine that. And there's no MMA media. That was their last fight last weekend. (laughs) That would be insane. That would be nuts. So what do you got going? Where are you flying tomorrow? Uh, Indiana. What are you doing out yeah, there? I'm a best man in a, we- a friend's wedding, high school friend's wedding. Damn, um, so you guys going to turn up a bit? Uh, yeah, go back to the old stomping grounds. Uh, but, man, just excited to... Is that where you went to high school? Yeah. Went- so you got all your boys out there? Were you guys all re- pretty rowdy in high school, too? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a small town, not a lot to do, so... So now you're the single guy going back, ready to rage, in the UFC. You should be able to slay, huh? Uh, possibly, man. I got... But over there you know it's like 22 years old you're you're settled down with kids letting yourself yeah, go so it is back home too i mean not everybody but uh maybe there's one that just recently got a divorce yeah something like that and she's yeah. looking to just get fucked i mean everybody knows me and you know small town famous so yeah. gotta be careful over there oh, yeah no shit fuck for real did you see that video that came out the uh they did a uh like a mtv cribs of dana's backyard having a barbecue wait i don't think that's the one or no maybe it was and he talked about his diet because he's been looking pretty slim Mm -hmm. he went into a some professional and the professional said he's got 10.4 years to live and then you're probably gonna die really and i was like damn that's pretty crazy so he changed his diet around Mm -hmm. man dude he's got this chef this like five-star chef who just cooks every single meal every single snack like I'm like, damn, that's that's like goals level rich right there just because of the food. Right, he just got him on, you know, sends him a text like, yeah. all right, to have this whipped up. Or, or I'm coming over some friends, get some shit on the grill, let's get yeah. popping. I think um, his son's birthday, he like threw a mega, uh, his 18th birthday or something like that. He invited like his top three favorite rappers and have him perform live. Jesus, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Kind of 18, I mean, that's a hell of an 18th birthday. Bo Nickel says, five fights in one year, five first round finishes, zero strikes absorbed. Nobody can do it like me. We headed to the top. Much love, all sorts. I'm pumped to watch him, dude. I'm pumped to watch his climb because that brings some excitement to the middleweight division. Mm-hmm. Especially you got Bo Nickel in there. You got Calms out. You got you got Jared. You got Israel. You got Strickland. There's going to be some sick fights in the future. Yeah, man. Uh, that division stacked. You know, got Gaslam too. That's Gaslam, man. He just got matched up, right? He's been out for a minute. Yeah, I mean. Gaslam's a motherfucker, dude. Yeah. When he comes back, I, it's fun watching him fight. It's yeah. crazy because his just stature, and he's got like he's not like kind of chunky. He's not tall, yeah. and he fucking outstrikes and outboxes big ass motherfuckers who are way yeah. more out, out athletic than him. Yeah, and uh, you know he's, he comes, he's a smaller guy, a little quicker, and he can just take a punch too. I mean, look what J- hit Jared hit him with that one punch that folded him but yeah man most people would be still asleep today dude some mexican heads it's like what the fuck i remember efren escudero he could take a shot like that and then i mean as far as izzy goes you know jared's fight was close not you know it wasn't as action-packed as like the gaslam one but man gaslam and izzy they were beating the (sighs) shit out of each other and then that's you know i think izzy's toughest test it's been gaslam yeah for sure fucking love to see that again i'd like to see him and jared again because feel like Izzy, you know, after after the Gaslam fight, I feel like Izzy's kind of played it safe, you know. I mean, and... and Which, rightfully so, I guess. Bro, because you're up there, it's like, okay, I'm going with the best guys. If right. I make one mistake, if I, I, I'm not in this spot where I need to be taking risks. Right. It's like, you don't need to be the one taking the risks. This other guy does. Right. I guess he finished Costa, but, you know, Vittori fights, Uel fight. Uh, Costa versus Boachino, who, who you think would win? Uh... Who's, say Paulo, that? Paulo Costa versus who? Comzat. Comzat. I think Costa, man. I mean, I'd like to see him bang. You know, I, Costa's not going to go away with, you know, one of the punches, I think, from Comzat. And wrestling wise, he didn't get taken down by Yoel, Yoel Romero. So, yep. like, Yoel's, a, you know, a freak of nature wrestling. Maybe not as, 
maybe not as good as MMA wrestlers, Hamza, you know. Yeah. Um, but, re- re- you know, pound for pound wrestling, UL's up there with, with all of them. Yeah, I think Boa, I think uh, Costa would beat him too. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Uh, they're starting some crap, so, you know, let's, That'll let's see That'll be a fucking it. war. But, you don't, yeah, you don't really see Kamza asking for it, saying, no, give me him, give me him, give him. Paulo Costa's one asking for it. Right. Okay, so who do you got here? Uh, we'll finish it up with some picks. Ooh. Charles versus Islam. I'm going to go Charles. Yeah, that's, I mean, Islam may do what, you know, the, the Habib and him do, but. Man, I'd like to see him try to hold Charles out all bare down for five rounds, and then on the feet, uh, you know, I got Charles. Like he'll, yeah. he'll take a punch, but I mean, um, I think he pieces up Islam on the feet. See, I'm the, I'm in the same same exact spot. I'm like Islam's gonna have to go 25 minutes if he does take him down. Right. In this guy who's so dangerous from his guard, right. dangerous with his elbows and dangerous with his omoplatos and his triangles and armbars. He's so slippery. You make one mistake, you let him get a good angle on you one time. It right. could be the end of the fight. And everyone's counting, Char- like so many people on my YouTube lives and stuff are counting Charles out. I'm like, dude, look at his fucking resume and look at Islam's resume. There's a good chance Islam could win. Right. But I think Charles is way more dangerous. Yeah, I think, you know, I'd like to be that guy in a fight where I'm dangerous versus, all right, I can hold this dude down for 25 minutes and maybe make him tired and get a submission. But, I mean, yeah. I see that's, you know, that's the only way I see Islam yeah you know getting it done is you know out wrestling him pretty much and holding him down peppering him yeah 100 percent. that's gonna be a fucking just massive fight so yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say charles by submission later in an ugly fight a war yeah. but we'll see i know I'd, I'd like to see just just because is like i was wanting to see you know love to be but i want to see like man someone can someone submit him you know like yeah. is it possible yeah i've yeah, heard about real. these guys grappling but can someone do it and I kind of, it's kind of the same thing for Islam. Yeah. Like, you know, and the, you know how MMA is. Right. Like, we always look at this. Is this the guy to beat unbeatable? Like, Chris Weidman or all these guys that you think, like, damn, they're never going to lose. And then something fucking happens. It's right. like, God. And Habib even said, he's like, I know if I keep fighting, I'll lose. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then we got uh, TJ Dillashaw versus Aljamain Sterling. Sterling. I think Dillashaw takes the belt. I think so. Um, and, you know, Sterling. Sterling's good. Uh, but I don't think you know he's gonna out grapple Dillashaw like he did Jan, and mm-hmm. then I don't think Sterling's got. I don't think he can hang on the feet with him. Yeah, I kind of said the same thing. I just think TJ's got a little more tricks on the feet. He looks a little more comfortable. He's got a lot of like knockout setups on his feet. It looks like, and then his former division one wrestling i feel like could possibly cancel out aljo's especially the big cage five rounds i think aljo's reigns come to the end but we'll see yeah and um you know aljo he's big strong take you down hold you down but i think i think Shaw can match him there you know he's yeah and he's went you know well he went five rounds with sanhagen Mm-hmm. thought Sanhagen it was a close fight I thought Sanhagen won the fight Dillashaw won the contest yeah I you think know? so too but and, and the thing is with TJ you just never know how is this fight camp going right. yeah yeah. his last one look, he looked good against Corey he, I mean he came out there and he fucking right. fought hard against Corey but now another five round fight camp with no PDs right how is your body holding up how right. you I, never know I was impressed you know he came off what two two and a half year layoff or something like that and look good as fuck for five rounds yeah and uh so we'll see like you said see if the fight can't wears but you know he knows how to go five rounds he's went five rounds so many times i think Mm -hmm. in his career or or trained for it like you know yeah i agree that's how he was able to come off you know a couple year layoff and be bam i can go five rounds with one of the best and get my face split open and you know get dropped yeah i still got it uh okay so we got uh sugar shane versus peter gotta go shook shane man mm-hmm. gotta go shook shane he's a four to one underdog really on a lot of sites uh i think so a hundred dollars on shook would win you 400 on some sites might be a bet we're gonna put down but and bro you i mean i'm excited for it i just think there's a good chance they're gonna beat him dude yeah i really do i'm uh, like what the fuck he's confident we're confident it's like trying to figure shot sugar out in 15 minutes what do you think yeah i, I agree um you know, take all bias aside of it, just like Yano Yano take some punches. Mm-hmm. 
I felt Sugar's right hand, and if he lands it, you know, we know what we knows mm-hmm. what happens. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I think that's like the difference between this, like Sandhagen and Shug. Like uh, Sandhagen's got nasty stuff; he may hit you with like one of those flying knees, one of those elbows. But his his hands aren't the one hitter quitter punches. You know, I think he's got the good movement, the long rangey, and you know, Yano take some and, and give it back. But can he take Sugar's right hand? Yeah, it's a little heavier, right? It's, it's a little you know, heavier, it's which heavier. is weird. But which is weird because even holding pads, I'm like, usually skinnier people don't crack like that. But right. he's got this weird heaviness to it, especially being consistent with Brandon Harris over these years. Now he's really grown into a man and put on some good size. Okay. Uh, yeah, because so, I think even when we were back on the Contender Series, he was weighing about what I was weighing for 25. Like, he was smaller. 38. Yeah. yeah. 38 in the cage on that night. Yeah. Yeah, I think my first three fights at Bantamweight, I was, like, under 45. Yeah. I was just like, God, I got to get bigger. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the whole kind of – this is a big opportunity. I just think after this fight, we got uh, still a couple weeks left the fight camp, but it's going good. After this fight, I feel like the, with Suge, the narrative will change a, mm-hmm. a bit, and they'll be like, damn, this motherfucker yeah, if can he, fight. He puts away Jan, what, what can you say? Yeah. And, and Jan's 5'5", five, five, I think, 5'5"-ish, five, five but man, Jan is a motherfucker, dude. Watching film on him, he's a tough little fuck. Yeah, yeah. He's going to you know, he's gonna put his chin down, he's going to throw, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean, that's, I guess that's the way him and Sanhagen was a good – I guess like uh, it was know, like it was fight. literally like I'm like I, I very good chance I know that the pace is different because it's five rounds so he could come out with a hotter pace right but I'm like he's gonna have that same plan right there yeah but just I even feel. even on three round fights he's got that tie style where it's just notoriously a little slower you pick up as yeah. you go type thing yep you and kind of stand in there in the middle also right and it's not a five round fight and if you look at a lot of Jan's finishes or you know i think a couple of them aldo and there's another one i think was in the fourth or fifth round yeah and, and he starts to take over in the fourth or fifth round which it's only a three round fight fuck dude i'm so pumped yeah, it's gonna be good man i'm so pumped um who else do we got on that we got benil deriush versus uh gomrat Ooh, it's a sick fight that dude. is a sick fight that's a fucking step up for uh gomrat they definitely can you know hang on the feet but i'd i'd kind of like to see him grapple for 15 minutes that'd be sick i know they're both uh man they're both nasty on the ground i think uh if i had a bet if someone's like here here's 10 grand to bet i would bet benil yeah i don't know he makes it a little ugly like you know he gets in there and i mean gumrod's good technical but i think darius make he's got that awkward style you know yeah just he'll take one to give one type of thing yeah and, for sure uh, Along with, you know, the grappling credentials and everything. And then we got uh, Bilal Muhammad versus Sean Brady. I'm excited for that fight. Yeah, man. Let's see how the wrestling goes. You know, if Sean can hold him down like he did Kiesa and stuff, mm-hmm. like, that's that. But they have to stand, you know. Bilal's yeah. got good wrestling, though. So Yeah, like tricky footwork. But everyone says Sean Brady's just a fucking stud on the ground. So yeah, hopefully just, it doesn't turn out to be kind of like a boring striking match where their wrestling cancels out. Right. Could uh, happen. Yeah, for sure. So, all right, brother. Well, thanks a lot for coming to do this. Of course, man. Uh, it's a blast. It's been a while since we talked, and uh, it's been good, man. Yeah, look forward to get back to training here because your hands are healthy, and if you had a goal, kind of when to come back, when would you think? Uh, I'd like to get one before the end of the year. You know, the end of the year is kind of coming up, but if I can get in on there on December sometime, it would be nice. It would be so, fire. Yeah. We'll have to get some get some training. Yep, get some training in and uh, shoot, get back to some of our grappling days and everything. Oh, fuck so. yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you like the content, there's a bunch more uh, behind the scenes. There's a bunch of extra shit, like – um on patreon top three books i mean there's a whole a whole list of content that's not anywhere else but patreon.com slash redhawk academy so if you like it support it and then this week i'm giving away another pair of the custom gloves signed if you want just fresh if you'd want so if you're a subscriber just click subscribe like and then comment on the video and then i'm going to pick a random winner for the gloves so all right ladies and gentlemen thank you very much love you bye-bye